Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris at the Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well here in the office, uh, nice and early in the morning. Uh, we had some substantial fog on the interstate, uh, so I ended up having to uh, leave my house earlier than usual to get here. And now I find myself here a little early, so I have a few minutes to just uh, do a quick video and talk about some concepts. And the concept I'd like to talk about today is uh, something that you may run into when talking to other healthcare providers or when you're uh, reviewing the chart of a patient. And this video is gonna be maybe a little more specific to individuals involved in the pre-hospital setting or the inter-facility trans transport setting. I would expect you to understand the, these concepts quite well if you are uh, consistently running into patients with these diagnoses in the inpatient setting. And that is something called HIFREF and something else called HFPEF or HIFPEF. Uh, what is this? What does it mean? What does it stand for? And is, is this something new? And it's not, it's really not something new at all. It's simply a different way of conceptualizing a problem that has been around for quite some time. And that of course is heart failure. So heart failure, broadly speaking, is the failure of the contractile mechanism of the heart. This is often due to failure of the myocardium, the muscular layer, uh, to work, although there are uh, lots of other pathologies that uh, may cause heart failure, but I would say the two major categories of pathologies that cause heart failure tend to fall under the umbrella of either ischemic uh, pathologies, coronary artery disease, myocardial infarctions, things of that nature, and then the so-called cardiomyopathies. And I understand that some people uh, also consider ischemic heart disease a type of cardiomyopathy, ischemic cardiomyopathy. I tend to separate those and I tend to talk about cardiomyopathies as a group of disorders of the myocardium more often than not uh, that are not the result of ischemic cardiovascular disease. So things like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and um, some of these other uh, kinds of, of, of issues. Okay, so that's what heart failure is. And there are many different ways of categorizing heart failure. Uh, those of you that are EMS providers, you had to have probably learned right-sided heart failure versus left-sided heart fail failure and the signs and symptoms that you can use to differentiate between the two types. And then in reality, most people have some degree of both right and left heart failure because the most common cause of right heart failure happens to be left heart failure. Uh, so it makes sense that those two tend to go together. Uh, there are some circumstances where right heart failure may be the predominant uh, problem, particularly in patients with uh, chronic uh, lung diseases may develop something called core pulmonale, which is a right-sided heart failure uh, that is the result of uh, essentially the right heart um, straining to pump blood through uh, the elevated pulmonary pressures of diseased lung. Um, all that aside, let's focus on these two terms that you run across. Again, these are the terms HFREF and HFPEF, HEFREF and HEFPEF. All right, what does these stand for? Well, let's talk about um, HEFREF. HFREF stands for Heart Failure Reduced Ejection Fraction. What does that mean? Well, that means that is a kind of heart failure that is the result or the one of the primary things that we see in this type of heart failure is the left ventricular ejection fraction is low, generally less than about 40% or 40% or less. Uh, the normal ejection fraction is about 50 to 70%. And the ejection fraction is essentially the fraction of the total blood volume that gets pumped out of the left ventricle per beat. Uh, for example, if the left ventricle can hold a maximum of, say, 100 milliliters of blood and 50 of that 100 milliliters of blood gets ejected per beat, then that would be 50% of the left ventricular volume. Um, and so you would say that that person has a 50% ejection fraction or left ventricular ejection fraction. 
It's a little more nuanced than that. The, the formula for uh, the left ventricular ejection fraction is actually stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume or the volume of the heart, the volume left in within the ventricle at the end of, um, of, of diastole. So essentially, when the left ventricle is completely filled, and then how much of that gets pumped out. So essentially, it's the maximum amount of blood in the left ventricle and how much of that can get pumped out. So that's the ejection fraction. And when you have heart failure with an ejection fraction that is less than 40, 50%, then we would say that that particular person has heart failure reduced ejection fraction. This is essentially another way of describing what's known as systolic heart failure. So systolic heart failure is roughly analogous to heart failure reduced ejection fraction. And systolic heart failure is just heart failure that results from uh, failure of systole. And systole, ventricular systole, is a failure of the ventricle to contract and pump blood out during systole. Right, so this is essentially another way of saying systolic heart failure, right? And this is a kind of classic kind of heart failure that we see with ischemic heart disease, uh, substantial coronary, coronary artery disease, and uh, what we see often following myocardial infarction, particularly where you have a, a loss of a significant amount of myocardium on the left side of the heart, left, uh, left. Uh, coronary artery uh, occlusions, LAD specifically, uh, but this can occur in the setting of um, any type of significant myocardial infarction, even MIs that involve the right side of the heart, and you can get abnormal ventricular remodeling that occurs after uh, myocardial infarctions as well. So that's HIF-REF, heart failure reduced ejection fraction. It is essentially systolic heart failure. So HIF-PEF, or heart failure Preserved ejection fraction is a kind of heart failure where the ejection fraction is generally going to be 50% or greater. So the ejection fraction isn't significantly lowered. Um, so what's going on there? Well, what's going on with heart failure preserved ejection fraction is the ventricle, the left ventricle, is able to contract, right? Um, and remember, the ejection fraction is a percentage of the total volume, right? So let's say that you have 10 milliliters of volume inside of your left ventricle. This is unrealistic, but this is just a cognitive exercise we can run through. Say you have 10 milliliters of volume inside of the, the left ventricle, and every time the left ventricle contracts, it pumps out nine milliliters. So nine of that 10 milliliters gets pumped out. So if you were to calculate the ejection fraction, that would be a 90% ejection fraction. That'd be higher than normal. But even though the ejection fraction is high, the actual amount of stroke volume is, is pitiful, right? It's probably not life-sustaining, at least talking about an adult patient, right? So there are situations where the ejection fraction doesn't tell us the whole story, right? And that is certainly the case with preserved ejection fraction heart failure. So in preserved ejection fraction heart failure, you the left ventricle can contract. So it's not a problem with contraction so much as it is a problem of getting enough blood filling the left ventricle. So when it contracts, it can actually pump a, a, a substantial amount of volume out. And so with preserved ejection fraction heart failure, it is not the contraction that is a problem, it is the ventricular filling that is the problem. And so this is often referred to as diastolic heart failure. So diastolic heart failure is roughly analogous to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So this is a failure of diastole. During diastole, ventricular diastole, what happens? The atria contract, pump blood into the ventricles, and the ventricles fill. Um, there's some passive filling, and then there's some filling that occurs doing, uh, due to that atrial kick, right? And so if the left ventricle can't fill sufficiently, and this is often due to conditions that make the left ventricle very restricted, right? So restrictive cardiomyopathy or restrictive pericarditis, um, things like that, where the left ventricle just can't fill up with an, an enough blood, to, to maintain a, um, an appropriate uh, stroke volume, right?
and to you know meet the metabolic demands of the body because that's gen in general broadly speaking that's what heart failure is is a failure for the heart to meet the the metabolic uh, demands of the body um, so those are the two major types of heart failure that you will often see documented and the kind of the contemporary way of documenting these major categories, if you will, of heart failure is with HIFREF, heart failure, reduced ejection fraction, think, oh, that's systolic heart failure, and then HIFPEF, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, you want to think, oh, that is more diastolic heart failure. All right, so hopefully the heart failure nomenclature makes a little more sense to you all. Thank you all so much and have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.